here he is. I'm going to read the list. Hey, everybody, this is Dave Lee with International Podcast Day. Thank you, everybody, for joining in to the live event. We encourage everybody out there in podcast land to use hashtag International Podcast Day. Share the news, spread the message, and we hope we all have a great time celebrating the power of podcast this International Podcast Day. So coming up in this hour, we have Evo Tara. He is from Thailand and... Evo is a professional digital strategist, having been either in, in or adjacent to the C-suite in digital advertising agencies or marketing departments since 1999. He's the 40th podcaster ever and a frequent keynote speaker on stages the world over. He's written two books in the Four Dummy series and thinks it's an awesome time someone made podcasting simpler. So his session coming up will be covering the, po the process of podcasting has nothing to do with audio editing. We're look, really looking forward to that. So if Evo, you are up, up here, go ahead and uh, turn your camera on. I'd like to introduce you to everybody. Hi. Hey there. Welcome to Hi. the International Podcast Day event. How are you today? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm fine today because it's, uh, it's morning in Thailand. Beautiful. Well, good morning. It's a, it's a good evening. I think it's 7 p.m. September 29th here in the United States in California. So real quickly, Evo, before I get you rolling, I want to just uh, thank our sponsors for the great International Podcast Day event. Blueberry is a full-service podcasting company, a turnkey solution that will allow a new or veteran podcaster to get set up and running within 15 minutes. Pay them a visit at blueberry.com. Also, Studio 21 Podcast Cafe is a working cafe with two podcasting and video casting studios. The grand opening happens September 30th, where they will be broadcasting live throughout the day. Pay them a visit at studio21podcast.cafe. Also, The Messengers, a podcast documentary, is a journey through the modern world of podcasting, uncovering the magic behind why podcasters do what they do. Get your copy of The Messengers in iTunes and on Amazon by visiting themessengersdoc.com. And of course, thank you to Potable. Are you looking for your new favorite podcast? Potable revolutionizes podcast discovery by providing podcast recommendations tailored to you. Start by going to play.potable.co. That's play.podible.co. And finally, thanks to our bronze sponsors, the Audacity Podcast, Modern Life Podcast Network, and Podbean. Well, Evo, I am going to let you go and fill the International Podcast Day community with all the knowledge that you've had over the past tw 10 plus years of podcasting. All? All is a lot. I don't know. Everybody. We've only got 50 minutes. I'm not sure I can give all of the things I've learned, and most it's, of them are inappropriate. Yeah, okay. It's, it's, a, it's a small opportunity here to, to impress everybody and reach, reach, reach a large volume of people. So uh, happy International Podcast Day, Evo. We look forward to hearing you, uh, talking to you in a, uh, 50 minutes or so. Hi, right, thanks very much, Dave. I appreciate it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to me, uh, as as Dave mentioned, for the new people out there. Uh, my name is Evo Terra, and I have been podcasting for a very, very long time. Uh, thank you, my love. My lovely wife is bringing me in tea because I'm going to talk to you guys for 55 minutes. My throat might get dry, and so tea will help things. Also, as mentioned, you'll notice I'm, um, it's daytime for me because it's 9 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday because I live in Bangkok, Thailand these days. Clearly, I'm not from Thailand. Uh, I started my podcasting career out in the great state of Phoenix. Well, that's a city. Uh, in the great state of Arizona where I was back in the early aughts beginning this process. So as Dave mentioned, I am the 40th podcaster ever or at least I had the 40th podcast ever. That's according to Podcast Alley. Uh, those of us listening who can remember Podcast Alley uh, from the early days, uh, of course, the, my friends Todd and Angelo from, from Blueberry can remember those days. According to, to Podcast Alley, uh, my show was ranked 40th. This was back in the day when it was possible to listen to every other podcaster back in, the, in late 2004. So my show uh, that I was a co-host of was called The Dragon Page, and it was a science fiction radio show originally. In fact, we started doing that show back in 2002 uh, as an online radio show before there was such a thing as podcasting. And in uh, October of 2004, we made the very easy switch to start producing our show, or publishing our show, I should say, uh, via an RSS feed to the magic of something called an enclosure tag. 
Oh, that was tricky. Thanks, Dave. And uh, that started the process. And uh, there we were. Suddenly, the, the 40th show on the planet podcasting geeky science fiction stuff for, for all of the world uh, to hear. So, yeah, I've, uh, I've, I've been doing this for, for a very long time. And, and I've learned a lot about what to do and, and what not to do and some processes to put together. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about, about process in a minute. Um, back to credentials to show you that I'm not just some person making up stuff as I go along. I, I'm also the co-author of both the first and second edition of Podcasting for Dummies. Uh, and I'm also the co-author of a book called Expert Podcasting Practices for Dummies, which is arguably the worst book title ever. Uh, but nonetheless, it was still popular and sold. Um, just a quick plug, not for me anymore, because I'm, I'm no longer the author of that book, but the third edition of Podcasting for Dummies, uh, written by my original co-author, T. Morris, uh, and uh, my good friend, and uh, uh, somewhat of a co-author for the second edition of that book, Chuck Tomasi. T. and Chuck are releasing a third edition of Podcasting for Dummies, all updated, all new, because the world has changed in the last 13 years. So that should be debuting, I think, sometime in October. So you probably take a pre-order about that now. Uh, I, I would recommend it. If, in fact, you're in the market for a book on podcasting, for those of you brand new to the process or those who want a good resource guide, it's, it's, it's great to have. And um, if you have one of my original ones, awesome, thanks. I'm, I still run into people at podcasting conventions or other areas around the world who say, your name's familiar to me. It's because it's sitting on the spine of a book they have in their bookshelf they probably haven't looked at in, in 10 to 7 years. So outside of podcasting for dummies, um, uh, where, where I wrote a little bit about process inside, but we were still, or I was still getting to understand what process really was for, for podcasting. Uh, a lot of that came to fruition. A lot of what I know about the process of podcasting came out of a company I launched in 2005 called patiobooks.com. Some of you might remember this. It was the original place where authors, not really podcasters, but authors were utilizing the techniques and the technology of podcasting to reach a wider audience by making a serialized audiobook out of their material that they had written in a novel form or sometimes short stories or sometimes even, even nonfiction books. And they would release chapters uh, one week at a time, built-in podcasting mechanism. Uh, I built uh, along with, well, of course, I didn't build it from scratch. I'm not a developer. Uh, Chris Miller was instrumental in helping me out, and a bunch of other people, a bunch of the authors were very influential in helping start something called patiobooks.com, where uh, we had up to 700 or so serialized audiobooks uh, that were out there. Uh, the, the podcasts are still available for most of those books. They're in iTunes, they're in Google Play, they're, they're everywhere, the, the feeds are still out there, even though patiobooks.com has been uh, absorbed into another company called, called Scribble, S-C-R-I-B-L. Oh, I need to plug in my power before I lose it. That would be a bad, a bad thing to do. So that's how I kind of figured out process because I'm supporting all of these podcasts for literally hundreds of authors, and I kind of had to figure out a way to, 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 to make it work. And that's when I started down the processing process. And I've had to really refine it over the last two years um, because, as you can see at the bottom of the lower third right there, uh, I run a service called podcastlaunch.pro where I am producing podcasts for people professionally. Uh, individuals I'm producing shows for as well as doing some podcast consulting for some uh, clients in the typically around the travel space, but lots of others that come to me to ask advice and questions about that. And I'm the author, or I'm not the author, but I'm the co-host of the Bangkok podcast and also a show called This One Time that I record with my lovely wife, Sheila D. Bangkok podcast is the the biggest or the number one English language podcast in Thailand. Yay! Uh, and this one time is a fun thing that we do to talk about our travels around the world. But enough plugging about me. That was five minutes of me talking about myself, which is way more than I usually go into things. Uh, let's talk about process. Let's talk specifically about the process of podcasting and what it means to... Um, to be a podcaster. I'm just checking messages as they come in, guys, so uh, apologize. I normally don't do this on stage. I don't have the phone sitting right in front of me to do that, but as tweets come in, I might I might see them. Can't promise, but I will, I will try to address questions as, the, as, they may, as they may come in. Okay, process. Why does process matter? Why do you need a process 
to podcast. Well, you don't need a process, but you probably should have a process if you're going to be a, a good podcaster uh, for uh, in, the, in the world of 2017. You know, we've learned a lot about how people want to cons consume audio-based programming in the last 13 years. Audio-based programming that comes via RSS feeds and down to their phones and how all of that is changing with the rise of mobile that's suddenly outproducing, outperforming anything in the, in the desktop world and how new apps and other services are coming along to change this thing that's called podcasting. We know a lot. We've learned what, what works and what doesn't work. And we've learned that the more you can, the more, well, typically the more you, attention you pay to the process, making sure you do things on a consistent, regular basis, it's a, it's, it's a good thing. The reality is this landscape called podcasting is, is fractured and, and, and started that way, and it's never going to go back. You know, we, we didn't take the YouTube route where everything goes in one spot. We opted to host our own media file somewhere and generate an RSS feed and strictly control our content, yet we also want to spread it everywhere. So it's kind of a weird, dysfunctional way that podcasting got started that I'm, that I'm not going to rail about. But that's a trend that's going to continue, especially as, as these new apps come out, as new opportunities are, are put forth. It's more important than ever that a podcaster, especially a new podcaster, I'm not talking about you vets who've got your process, who've done it your way for 13 years and you don't want to change. I'm not really talking to you guys. I'm talking to the new podcaster or the podcaster who says, maybe I should focus on some of this stuff better to make my show a little bit, a little bit tighter. Because having a really good process, and I'm going to share specific pod, uh, processes with you in just a moment with some screen shares. But having a good process, having a routine, isn't putting you inside of a rut but it actually keeps you on track, it keeps you focused, and I think implemented properly can significantly increase your chance of finding success in podcasting, whatever success in podcasting means to you. I'm not promising that if you follow a process, you'll suddenly get 30,000 30-day listens to all of your shows so that the advertising dollars come flowing in. It's not, it's not my promise uh, at all. But I am promising you that if you can figure out what your process is and tighten it up a bit, you will find your, the time you spend on podcasting, the whole process of podcasting, much more valuable. I think everybody will like it a lot more, too. So let's talk about what I mean specifically by a process. So I'm going to share two different extreme versions of, of two kinds of processes that are on the far bookends of this thing we call podcasting. So one just happened to me a, a week or so ago. A, a friend of mine who produces a podcast, a daily podcast, which is crazy. I would not recommend doing a daily podcast, but hey, if that's what you want to do, knock yourself out. Uh, he contacted me because as often happens, as, as has happened to me, and I'm certain has happened to you, for those of you podcasters who, who use guests on your show, uh, his guest canceled for the day. And his guest canceled minutes before he was scheduled to make a recording. Now, this show doesn't go out live like most podcasts, although some are starting to these days, but he still has a daily podcast and he needs to fill that content. So um, he called me because he knew I was available and I think I'd said something on, online somewhere, so he knew I was around. And he said, would you mind coming on the show? And I, I said, sure. Now, his process, I hadn't listened to his, his show, but it's a, it's a five minute show. So I knew I wasn't in for a long amount of time, so I said yes. And, Literally within 10 minutes, he was pinging me on Zencaster, and uh, we were having a conversation. And he's got this quirky little process by which he a little bit of banter up front, and then he says, okay, I'm going to set the timer, and we talk for five minutes. And at the, at the end of the five minutes, uh, the timer goes off, and the timer is a clucking chicken sound, which is, which is kind of odd. So, uh, And then we say thanks, goodbye, and it was done. So 10 minutes later, uh, you know, the, I was done with my recording, and I, and I said at the end, you know, let, let me know when it goes live. And he said, I will. And 15 minutes later, I got notice that the show was live. 15 minutes. Now, maybe for a, for a daily show, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's an important thing, right? But, but for most of us, 15 minutes? Wow, that's, a, that's awfully quick. Um, was it a process? Uh, not really, because in this particular case, his, his process was simply trim off the very, very front 
trim off the very, very end. Leave everything else together. Don't do any editing in the middle. Don't add med music. Don't add anything. Just upload it to the media host and then send out a tweet when it's done. That was the extent of the process. That's one extreme version. Not, not, not one I would recommend. But that's the, the, what I call the uh, record and release method of podcasting, which was pretty popular for a long time. And it's still popular today. Get it out as quickly as you possibly can because you've got other things to do. I understand. I understand. That's what people employ, and that's fine. There's a, there's a process around that. Let's flip to the other end, the other bookend of the spectrum. For those of you who've listened to anything uh, by Gimlet Media, by Radiotopia, by Panoply, or any of the other, let's call them, I'm going to call them serious, because I think all, I'm not going to worry about the word professional, but serious, business-driven, I want to build an industry around podcasting. Those companies are borrowing heavily from a methodology and a process that was perfected by NPR over the number of years, and this concept of storytelling. Those shows take literally weeks, if not months, to develop. 60 hours, 60 people hours on average, goes into each one of the programs that goes out there. They're not sat down and said, well, it's Thursday, my show goes on Friday, what am I going to talk about? No. It's a long series of processes with multiple people working really hard to make sure things actually plan. So you have the record and release on one side of the spectrum, which is super easy, and you've got, let's spend a month hoping we get content. It's not an either-or situation. Success lies somewhere in the middle of these, right where my face is. That's where your success is. My process is more laborious than most, but it's certainly not six-week. It's all done in a, in, a, in a contiguous fashion, and that's what I want to. That's what I want to show you today. So. Enough of me talking. Can I show you a slide? Uh, I'm going to attempt to do a screen share via Hangouts, which is always problematic. But in theory, it's going to work. So we're going to find out. I'm going to click right over here. I'm going to say screen share. I'm going to say application window. And I'm going to see this. And I'm going to say share. OK. If you're seeing what I'm seeing, <clears throat> we're in great shape. So when should you actually apply this process? process of podcasting. Well, to me, I think there are three basic places where you can utilize a process to improve your podcasting performance or where people actually already are using processes today. And there's nothing surprising about this, but I'll break it down into, into three basic buckets. First bucket is planning. When you're planning what you're going to talk about on your show or on an individual episode, so the entire show, the podcast itself, or an individual episode, when you're planning those things out, a process helps you very big. Then there's the actual producing of the content, which is broken into two sections. It's To me, when I think of recu uh, producing, the simplest way to think about that is recording and then editing. That, to me, is a production process, gathering the audio or video, if you're a video producer, and then figuring out how to edit that into a coherent story, interview, episode, whatever you want to call it. So planning, producing, and then the last bit is publishing. The process of actually taking that file that you have edited down and putting it in your podcast feed, on your website, through across the social processes, all of those things. Those are the three basic steps, planning, producing, recording, and editing. Now, there's lots written about that middle part. Right? There's a lot of information that comes out about the middle part itself. But there's not a whole lot about written for the first part. I mean, planning in most people's cases, planning in most of the, the content that you read about is limited to simply, well, figure out who your guest is going to be and what your topic for an episode is and jot down some notes. Great, you're done. I mean, that's almost literally what I read about when I talk about, when I read people's conversation about planning out an episode or planning out a show. Figure out what your shtick is and go. Even some of the best books, they don't talk deeply about planning. They talk more about that middle stuff of the producing thing, the recording and editing, right? Um, whoops, what happened to my other slide here? Did I do this properly? There we go. Producing, recording, and editing, right? So, um, and then the last bit, 
isn't talked a lot about uh, is, is publishing because really all they say in these books is now you should go push that file to your media host and then make sure iTunes picks up the feed and maybe you should tweet and Facebook about it. All of the us of the information, everything we talk about, or the vast majority of the content is about the process of producing audio. But I think there's lots more to discuss. In fact, I know that there's lots more to discuss on those edges. Yes, the middle part of producing is important, but that's not what I want to talk about today. That's why the title of this is process that has nothing to do with the producing aspect. I want to talk more about the planning and the publishing for you guys. That's really what I want to do today. That's the plan. So that's what we're going to do right now. So hopefully you guys are able to see this and, uh, and, and we're good to go and you, and you get the concept, right? So it's back on me now. Hi, I'm back and I'm going to start walking you through this process. And I'll be doing some screen sharing back and forth of how we do things. So let's get into me and the processes that I use every single day, honestly, as, I, as I'm producing podcasts. Now, a, a word of caution, the tools I'm going to show you are the tools that I have chosen to use. I'm technology agnostic when it comes to most things. I use the tools that work for me. You use the tools that work for you. I'm not dictating what you should use. Um, for me, I like to Google Drive products. Google That means Google Docs. Uh, and that means Google Sheets, specifically the knockoff for uh, Word and Excel, if you will. If I never open Microsoft Word or Excel again, it'll be too soon. To me, it's, it's the right tool to use because it, it works. Uh, but if you want to use Slack, great. I love Slack. If you can collaborate, especially if you're collaborating with someone, if Slack works for you, use it. I've seen great processes done in Trello boards. Wonderful. I don't really care what you utilize. Just use something. I'm going to show you how I do this with Google products. You can choose to do whatever the heck you want to with whatever your tool is. Okay, so for that planning piece, most of the time what I'm utilizing is something that's called a script. And I will show you one in just a moment, a real live script that we used just a few weeks ago to record one of the episodes of my show. That's what most of my planning goes into for each episode is in the script. Uh, also, I do some planning for the show inside of Google Sheets, which is the spreadsheet action, and I will show you the exact spreadsheet that I'm using to plan the show that I produce every single week, one of the shows that I produce. And oh, and by the way, this is the same type of script and planning documents that I use for all the shows I produce for both me personally and for my clients as well. When I'm in a publishing mode, I use something called a playbook, and I'll show that to you as well. Uh, that's uh, That links out to some Google Docs. Um, and then I also use some free tools like Canva and Preview to do link editing and stuff because I don't want to get involved with having anything crazy for imagery. Right? I want to worry about making great audio and making the text that surrounds it. So, and then, of course, I'm going to use a series of tools like Buffer and Social Jukebox to do the real publishing. But the power I want to show you guys today is all in these Google Docs, the, the sheets, uh, and these docs that I'm utilizing and, and how it makes my life so much easier managing two, three, four, five, five different podcasts that I'm working with right now on a regular basis and then, I don't know, a half dozen more uh, as, as they come in. So it keeps me sane. This all keeps me sane. So uh, we're going to work a little backwards. I'm going to start with the publishing piece because I think that's probably the most important place for me to, to start talking. Um, I think the real power of my process lives in this in this thing that I got that's called a playbook. So Bear with me as I attempt to share a screen from the same browser. Probably shouldn't have done that. I probably should have launched those somewhere else. But I didn't, so I'm just going to do what I can and uh, come back to me for a second, cancel out of that. Hold on just a moment, folks, while I make a quick little adjustment. That's because I'm on the wrong one. That's the one I want to be on. Go back to me, screen share application window. I was smart enough to launch another window, so maybe, maybe you're going to see it. Awesome. And you can. So you can see the screen now of the, the, the document that I use. This is one of the tabs and something that I use called a playbook. And this is the live, honest to goodness, real playbook that I use and my partner use every single week when we produce an episode of the Bangkok podcast. All right, so you're seeing the real life stuff. Um, I didn't doctor anything up here. Everything is legitimate. 
So this is the real honest to goodness stuff. Oh, and by the way, you are free to steal this if you would like. Uh, in fact, if you want, I, I would probably even be, uh, I, I might even send you guys a, a link to a blank one of these if you want it. But again, it's my process. It may not work for you. So if you like any of this stuff, take it. I don't need credit. I don't need anything. I just want to help you guys do a much better process. So let me catch up onto my notes to see where I'm at. <clears throat> okay, so inside of this playbook, I've got lots of different tabs, but the tab I want to show you right now, which we're not going to talk about for long here, is the publishing process. Because here's the reality. Uh, I sit in my condo. My partner sits across about 500 meters away in his condo. We do not record the show together. Did I mention we live in Bangkok? We don't walk outside. Outside is hot. We don't want to be out there at all. So we do everything remotely. So even though we're only meters away from each other, some of you are probably long ways away from each other. And I use something like this also for my clients where I'm tens of thousands, well, over 10,000 kilometers away from some of my clients right now. We use this process because they do some work and I do some work. It's great to go back and forth. So this first document, I need to switch to my screen so I can see it uh, and make it move by. So this first document I'm going to show you is, come back to here, this is my process. So the first part of it, at, at the beginning of the media creation process, which really only exists here to remind us what it is that we need to do, to remind us that, right, when we're done with the show, we have to export an MP3, and these are the exact settings, and we have to create some images. Now, because we do this week over week, it's not really a problem for us to remember that, but occasionally, I take over the editing process, and since I don't do the audio editing for this show on a weekly basis, having this information written down somewhere is a helpful reminder. Plus, I'm going on vacation next week for about a month, and when I come back, I don't want to have to remember what it is that we do. This is the information I need here in the media creation piece. But mostly what happens is my partner Greg is responsible for doing all of the media creation work in yellow. When he's done, he hands it over to me, and I start doing this process that's in the green. So I check and make sure that my, my screen is still showing what I want. Yeah, it is. looks good. I take over the green stuff because he does the audio editing. I, in this case, our division of labor, I write up the show notes. So this is a reminder to me for when I come back from my vacation, my vacation to Bali, if the volcano doesn't blow the island up, I will come here and, and remind me what to do. Every week, I go to Google Drive and I copy the prior week's formula, or the, the prior week's document and work for it. I write a title, I write an excerpt, I write a body, I love, and I'm going to show you this very, very, this document itself in just a moment. But this is a reminder for me of the process. So process number one is go to, Google Drive, go to Docs, and write up show notes in this structured fashion that we have. The second thing that I do is once that is done, I fill out something called the Descriptors tab. Astute listeners or viewers will notice that it's at the bottom of the screen. You can see where it says Descriptors tab right down here. I will show you that in just a moment. But for now, this is a reminder what I'm supposed to fill out. I need this information. I need a title. I need an excerpt. I need a summary written for Apple Podcast because now we have new things called summaries, right? Um, and I'm also going to remind myself to write the Facebook update, the initial one, and the tweet that's going out with it, and record information. All of this stuff is written down in the descriptors tab, just walking through what the process is with you right now. When I'm done with that, I send a note to my partner, Greg, telling him I'm finished, and it's his job to do blue stuff again. He then finalizes the MP3. He can't finalize the MP3 unless I've done this work because he needs to get the title of the show, which I write in the show notes. I have to write that. So he has to wait for me to be done so he can finalize the MP3, and then he uploads it to Libsyn, which is our hosting platform. Same process would work for my friends at Blueberry as well. We then move into the publishing process itself, um, where we take the information from the Google Doc, which I'm going to show you, and we shove it into WordPress. But because we have different uh, there's different pieces of WordPress. There's different plugins that we can utilize. This information tells us exactly what to do for our current install of WordPress. So all of this happens, and my partner, Greg, usually does that. And you'll notice it tells him exactly when to publish the information so that our show goes out at a consistent time each week. Right now, I'm just showing you the, the steps that we use, not the documents we fill out. I'll get to the documents in just a moment. Once that is done, we then schedule the media uh, release itself inside of Libsyn which means not just the, the uh, media release itself, which we fill out all the new little bugs and uh, boxes that were dropped in because of, uh, thank you, Apple's new podcasting methodology. Um, 
artwork to upload. And again, this is just a reminder for if I have to do it or Greg's away, we come back and say, oh yeah, that's where I, that's where I do these things. It's good to have these steps written down. Uh, and then once it's been scheduled, he said publish, then we do some additional social sharing that we can't do automatically through Libsyn, uh, and that's namely Patreon and a service called Line, which if you're not in Southeast Asia, you probably never use Line, but it's huge over here. Line is a thing that we utilize more than anything, right? Okay, so that in a very quick nutshell is the beginning of the, of the process. I'm not done by a long shot. We still got a lot more information to go through. Just trying to get back to my, oh, there we are. I can see me again now. So that's the process of the, just the kind of reminder sheet of what it is that we are doing. Now, for fun, actually for the real deal, the real power of this thing comes in this tab that I call the descriptors tab. And it's, you won't understand why this is so powerful until you actually need, need to use it. So this descriptors tab, which let me get to again, I'm gonna actually share my screen one more time. Screen share, screen share, application window, boom. Here's my descriptors tab. And the descriptors tab is where the things I need for this episode live. You can see the headers across the top. Here's one that we just filled out for our, for our 51st show, just went live of season two on Thursday. And all of the information I needed was inside of this document. That's where it was. I know the title, I have the episode excerpt itself, plus I have that iTunes summary, which is a short version. Uh, I've got a little counter over here to make sure that it doesn't go over 130 characters. It turns red like this one. This was before I actually put an implementation in. Just figured out a few days ago that uh, after about 130 characters, the iTunes summary puts a more truncation, and I just want it to look good inside of uh, the Apple's podcast uh, application, which is where most of our listeners come from. So I want to make sure I stay less than 130 characters for this new thing called the iTunes summary. I put a link to the individual show notes, which I will show you in just a moment. Write up some keywords. I write the Facebook update right here along with this little tag at the bottom where I tell people to go listen to Apple Podcasts and Android. Because I use Libsyn, it automatically publishes a video to Facebook for me with this text on it. So they can watch the video, the static image, or they can click the link to listen on Apple Podcasts or Android. Uh, and then also I write the tweet which is specific to this particular episode. And uh, you'll notice I have a counter on that one too to make sure that it stays under 116 characters. That leaves room for the link uh, that Libsyn puts on it and the Libsyn system. If you have more than 116 characters, it won't actually send out uh, your update anymore. So that's not a good thing. Uh, and then I list the media file URL once it's been uploaded and the actual URL of the blog post. And the reason I do all is when somebody, when I need to access information about an episode, I don't go to my website and search for it. I don't have to do that because it's all right here. I can pull up the episode, I can scour this entire document, I can search for things, and I've got a link to the blog post, I've got a link to the media file, I've got a link to where the show notes were for that particular location, for that particular episode. It's all right here in handy. If I need to reshare something, if something was super key and critical, a guest came on the show perhaps and wanted to do something or I needed to, to send another update out during the week. It's all right here. Everything I need per episode is in one simple document that I call the descriptors tab. I force all of my clients to fill out their descriptors tab. And if I don't force them to do that, uh, I sometimes uh, do that myself. Okay. That's the descriptors tab. It's awesome. It's a wonderful way to keep things up. But we've only, only just begun. The next one I want to show you that's for planning out episodes, right? The next one I want to show you is called, is what, where I keep all my information about my, my show overall itself. Let me, I'm back to you now. Let me switch over and show you how I keep the show itself on track. Not an individual episode, but the individual show. That's also in the playbook, and that's in a tab. Oops, let me go back to my screen. That is in a tab that I simply call show details, which is pretty simple stuff. But just like it's important for me to have quick, easy access when I need to share episode details, I never have to wonder what my information looks like across uh, where I published information. I've got a name. I know when it gets released. I know exactly what I've written uh, for, for iTunes. 
I've got the information from my RSS feed on what my author name. Also, more importantly, if I need to share my, uh, my iTunes or my Apple podcast URL, it's right here in a short URL, so I'd have to send the long, huge thing out, and I did a Google URL so I can track it, or my subscribe on Android link. Thank you very much, Todd and Angelo from Blueberry for that. There's my subscribe on Android link. My base you feed URL. If I need to resub, if I need to submit my podcast to a new directory, I don't have to go look up where the RSS feed is. It's right here. And that crazy long 400 character monstrosity of Google Play Music, I've shortened up into a short URL. So all of that is right here. Plus my links to Spreaker and Stitcher and TuneIn. And at the very very bottom, I put some information for ID3 artist album and genre so it's a, in an easy spot so I keep my tagging identical uh, each and every week if we do it manually if the publishing tool we use doesn't doesn't do it itself right so there you go that's that's the that's the process that I utilize to keep my show itself uh, organized which is very helpful when especially when you have lots of different shows that you're producing like me you know I'm producing a lot of different shows each week so it's, it's nice to have uh, a, a quick way to get there. This is a great planning tool if you're collaborating with someone. For example, I would like to screen my screen share one more time. Great example of that is here. When my partner Greg and I are thinking about new episodes we want to use for the Bangkok podcast, we go into that same exact playbook. So it's in one location. It's not hiding in lots of different folders. And we have a list that's called Future Show Topics where we put together what a rough title might be, and it's never the title that we use, and just a general idea of what we want to talk about. And once we've identified something that's going to go for the next few weeks, we then turn those cells into green. This becomes where we keep track of all the things that we're doing. This becomes where we have our, our conversation, whether that's in person or remotely, about what our next shows should be looking like as we start planning things out. Again, I'm gone for the next three weeks, so we had to get ahead so we can have a weekly show to continue to come out because I didn't feel like recording when I was uh, on vacation in Indonesia. So future show topics is handy to have. I'm just going to switch over one more and show you that listener suggestion tab if I can get it to actually work for me because there we go. Listener suggestions. We do have some active listeners out there who write to us on, on Facebook or actually most come from our Patreon supporters right now. Uh, so we keep track of what it is that they're, that they're asking us to do. And if we like that, then we'll come back and bring it over into, into a show, future show topic for that, right? So that is the basic process. That's one. I've got more documents to show you. Don't go away. I've got more processes to show you in the next, oh my goodness. 20 minutes. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. That's the basic planning, or I'm sorry, that's kind of the publishing tool that I'm utilizing. I've got the right kind of information, plus it goes back top to the planning, so I know what my show is about, I know what my episodes could be about, episode order of operation, and then all the details I need so that when I publish it, I get together. And that's just one. That's just one. We've got um, more to show you. I'm going to show you how we plan out an actual episode. Once we've gone through the possible topics and we've decided what it is we're going to record, we do not, we do not, as a general rule, just sit down with two microphones, well, my, me microphone and his microphone over there, and just start talking about the topic. We do way more than that. We actually plan out what our show is going to look like. And we do that through a script that we have put together. Now, if, if you've never worked in showbiz and I've only worked as in one occasional uh, showbiz from uh, from a, an extra point of view. I'm sure there's a dozen ways to do a script. The way I put a script together, the way we put a script together, is also using Google. We use Google Sheets this time, the the spreadsheet tool, because it's a better way to make make information kind of chunky. And I'm going to show you what that looks like as soon as I can switch back to my listing and make sure I have the the right ones open. And apparently, I do. So here we go. I'm going to show you a script in three, two, one, episode script now. Here's the base model of what an episode script looks like. Notice it's not pretty. We didn't do a lot of customizing to make it look good because no human ever sees this that's not named Evo or Greg. That's it. 
We're the only ones that, that look at this. But this script helps keep us on track. I'm going to show you the blank one, so I can talk about the sections, and then I'll show you one that's actually filled out. You'll notice across the bottom, we keep multiple tabs. We keep every tab of every show that we've done and every planned show coming as well. So for us, the way we do things, uh, we record actually two episodes when we sit down on a Thursday night, which is our typical recording time. Uh, we record one, which is a, a bonus show that goes out just to uh, our private patron audience. And we don't get too terribly tight with the format of this exclusive show. It's what we do on the show is we share some more personal information, uh, some things that we don't want to share publicly with the world, and, and, and not because we're afraid of doing that, but we live in Thailand, and uh, we're both not Thai, and there are some, um, some challenges of, of, there's some things we just shouldn't say in a country that has, is currently under military dictatorship. I guess is the way to say that, right? Uh, anyhow, so we have a Patreon bonus show, and all we do in that bonus show for, for our notes ahead of time is we put down a couple of quick bullet points. This is what we're going to talk about. And then we actually do just get on the microphone and riff around those topics for 15 to 20 minutes, and they get saved, and we'll use it for our patrons. Once that is over, once that is over, we get down to the next section. We'll choose what a topic is, and again, I'm going to show you a live version of this in just a moment. I just want to show you the structure for now. We put in the topic, and this is organized the way that our show flows each and every week. We write an intro tag where we talk about what it is we're going to talk about. In reality, we do this at the end when I show you the live show. It's the last thing that we record, but as far as show flow goes, what makes sense to you, I'm putting it on the top. So we rewrite this, and we record this into the microphone once the show is done. And that's the first thing that plays on our episode. We have an intro tag, which lasts for, I don't know, four or five seconds for us to, to prep what the show is going to be. We play a couple of seconds worth of intro music, fade the music out, and then we have what looks like a canned intro, but it's not. This is the script that we use. Uh, my partner, Greg, likes to change his up each week, so we don't make a canned intro. Plus, we sometimes record on location. We don't want it to sound too terribly odd. It's a short enough intro that... We have this memorized, but if we want to rewrite some stuff, that we can do that for, for the intro. Next section of our show for the Bangkok podcast is something that's a, a Patreon plug. We don't say that out loud, but we, we typically do. Right after the intro, we move right into a, a Patreon plug, and this is the basic structure of what that plug is going to look like. We don't say the, we don't, we always go through and edit this so that it's relevant. Uh, and you'll notice we bring in the topic, so this keeps us on track. And yes, we do read this mostly word for word, although there's a little bit of uh, poetic license we will take in the in the middle of the uh, the recording, so we don't just sound like we're reading from a script. After the plug, we do something called a soft open, which is a, a short little piece of information. Uh, it's not my favorite part of the show, but my, my partner Greg really likes it, so we're, we're definitely keeping it in. We try and keep that short and sweet, something interesting that happened recently to us in Bangkok. And then we get into the meat. And we actually, in this section here, we will write out exactly how we're going to intro things. And we read that mostly verbatim. So right now, you're just seeing on this episode a placeholder. I'll show you the reality next. We don't write out a full script for our show of the body of the show. Instead, we write out, basically, we have several sections here inside of the soft open, or inside of the episode open, where we can put bullet points of the things we want to talk about. And then it's a reminder for me to write some sort of, a, of an outro, or if we did an interview and we come back from that, something short and sweet to, to end that part of the episode and then I go into the segue uh, that I write or I come I make up usually on the spot and bring it into a, a section of the show that we call Love, Loathe, or Leave. It's the, one of the last things our show does every single week. We then wrap once again with listener appreciation where you see my notes and the things to talk about. Uh, and then Greg wraps it back into thanking once again our patrons. And then he reads this verbatim everything in the outro he reads word for word and I then follow I'm the last thing and I add mine end to end that's it and then the outro music plays and and our show is over so this is where we begin our process usually the day of the recording sometimes a couple of days before we'll start filling this out but by the time we sit down before we hit record this document is filled out here's an example of an actual one that we used live just last week 
we did this right here. For our Patreon bonus, a couple of notes. I had an experience with my old, the old school I used to, uh, to attend back in the day. So that goes there, and we just chatted about that for a while. The, it was about a park here in Bangkok called Chulalongkorn University Centenary Park. Whew, long, 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 long name. Here's the intro, and you'll see Greg modified it slightly. Here's a Patreon plug. We read this almost verbatim. Again, you'll notice that my section in brackets isn't that way. So we read that plug. We go straight into the soft open where Greg talks um, uh, about this idea of visiting Bangkok. That was written custom for this section. We then go into the opening episode, the episode opener itself. Greg will read that verbatim or mostly verbatim, a little bit of uh, information. And then here are the points that we want to talk about throughout the show. And we both have a copy of this as we're recording either on our mobile phones or on our computer, so that we're seeing exactly where the other person is. There's not a lot of guesswork. And so it means we can just record the whole thing in one take with little editing on the back end because we know what our sections are going to be. Our outro was here. I did the love, lo 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 love load, or leave section, you'll notice, where there's a little written down, a, a DF. I actually, that's a, a key to me. I, it, it's fun for us in the love, load, or leave to spring on the, the spring the other person and not tell them ahead of time what the, what the topic is. So we just make a little code word like DF stands for something called dragon fruit, where we discussed the most disgusting fruit of Thailand, or at least the most disappointing fruit in Thailand, as they see it. Our listener appreciation, sometimes it'll be written for word for word. In this case, you'll see it's not. I just basically replugged the, the bonus content we did previously. And then there's the canned outro that we record each and every week because it sounds and flows naturally through us all the time. There's our outro music. And then at the end, once we're done recording, Greg writes his opener, with his, the beginning intro tag. Uh, I write the second piece of that, and then we write this information. This is the only section that is filled out uh, at, at the when we're actually recording, but we're done. We take a break, and we come back and record this because it goes at the very, very beginning of the process, right? Yeah. So that's how we do it. That's the basic rundown of the process. I'm going to show you one more thing before we go, so don't, don't worry. I just want, to, just want to check back and let you know there's really a human standing here that, that utilizes this process um, all the time. So, yeah, we follow that process. We go back to the playbook if we need to when we're doing the editing, uh, and, but, but that's what we record uh, every, every, single, every single week, right? Um, two more things I want to show you real quickly inside of, of that document that we, that we just that we just looked at, if I can get back to it. Um, you'll notice there was a couple of other uh, sections in here. Like we have, and these are kind of more planning than they are, but they, but they make sense for the effort to be here just because of the way that, the, way that uh, the process itself works. And if I can get back to my Hangout screen, come on. Ah, right, here we go. Application window, boom. So I'll just stay here so that I'm not bouncing around all the time. So here is uh, a, a patrons to thank. You'll notice that we had two sections where we, we talked about patrons. Patrons are very important. It's the only way our show makes money, and we're growing them every single month. We get new people, and so far, we haven't lost anyone, which is, which is really good news. One of the ways we do that is we keep track here of when they pledged, how much money we got, what their name was, and the, what, what they what wanted to say about them. Uh, the, other, the other section we have here is to keep track of that weird, quirky little love, loathe, or leave section. Uh, I keep a list of everything that we have said previously. So when we're coming up with what's the one weird, quirky thing about Bangkok, we don't repeat anything because all of them um, are in here. It's a quick way to, to keep up with that, right? Makes sense? Wonderful? Good? Understand? Great. So I've shared you three doc, or I've shared two, yeah, two sheets with you, or two, two sheet documents. I'm going to do one more before we're all said and done. I've got 10 minutes to do this last one. We should be in good shape. So I shared with you my playbook, which is kind of the brains, the heart and soul of the show, where, they, where, they, where we uh, figure out what to do for the episode. So when we need to go somewhere and do something, the, the playbook is kind of the primary thing. And then I showed you the scripts, where we actually are inside of each episode, how we go through and, and, and make sure that the process works for us that way. The last bit I'm going to show you is on the publishing side. You know, what happens when we've got audio done, uh, we've got all that, 
but now we actually need to write out our show notes itself. Show notes are a nightmare for many podcasters. Uh, they, they they just don't do a good job of show notes. They're they're quick and easy, and but let me tell you exactly what it is what it is that we do because I think I think this process that I've I've been working on for the last few years with my clients seems to work out pretty well, um, and hopefully you guys will like it too. Let me just switch and and get to it because for some reason. Um, I didn't. I didn't open the show notes, and I and I need to have those show notes open. So if you'll bear with me for a, just a moment, did I do, do that? Sorry, guys. I apologize for not being completely prepped. Oh, I did. I was ready. I'm totally wrong. I um, I just didn't. I didn't recognize the uh, the color for some strange reason. So let's let's get back to where I need to be here, and I will share with you show notes themselves. Screening share right now, application window, boom. You are now, now, you are seeing the actual show notes. Uh, this is from episode 54, the one that we just recorded. I showed you 51. No, sorry, this is the episode that we just released. I haven't written the show notes for some of the other ones yet. So this was just released uh, recently. It's episode 51. And it was about us taking a, a tuk-tuk tour uh, in Bangkok. So if you remember from previously when I had showed you, I'm just going to switch back so I can see the same thing you're looking at. When I showed you the playbook, uh, the, uh, the, the, the playbook for episode number 51 in, in the descriptors tab, all of this information right here is here. That's where I got it from. So there's the title, there's that excerpt that was previously written, and here's the most important part, which is the details. Now, the way that we write show notes is this. Greg has done all of his editing. He gives the file to me, and I listen. I just listen. And I make these little bullet points down here. It's kind of where I start. My secret is just doing the bullet points first. I don't write them completely, but I just put down some notes of what was interesting. That's it. That's my key thing that I do, and I listen to the entire episode. Here's a trick, podcasters, if you want to do a better job, listen to the entire stinking episode when you're writing out your content. I write those bullet points out, and then I pull back up to the top and I kind of summarize. This is what's mm -hmm. happening. I write it for, here's my basic summary of, of everything that actually happened, and it's all written an idea for getting people to actually listen mm -hmm. to the show. That's the important thing for me, get someone to listen. So astute listeners will notice, right? Uh, here's what you're in for on this episode. So we, it's really geared toward getting those people actually to listen to the content. Love, loathe, or leave, it comes from the script. Remember that script where I had the love, loathe, or leave section here uh, inside of an individual episode? Like here's one coming up for, we haven't done that one yet. So here's the love, loathe, or leave DF, right? I know it's dragon fruit, so I'm going to talk about and I write it up here very, very briefly, although this wasn't Dragon Fruit, this was going to Chatter Chat Market. Plug our supporters once again, and all the information below is done. So I don't write show notes. We don't write show notes inside of WordPress, our tool. We write show notes inside of Google Drive because it gives us more control, and it also allows us to edit things before they go back, before we post them. So I can write, Greg edits, Greg posts. It's a great, it's a great way to share the, some of the responsibility and the information. Wow, that was a lot I threw at you guys. To recap once again, I shared with you a playbook, which if you do nothing, if you take nothing else from what I talked about in this episode, grab a playbook. Have one tab of your playbook be all the detailed information about your show. So you've got one spot to go to get your feeds, your process, your, your, your URLs that you need, uh, so you know exactly what your description is, what you're saying, uh, I wouldn't store passwords and stuff there personally, but you can if, if you wish to. We, we have a different process for that. So what's the show all about? A second tab called the descriptors that you fill out each and every week, especially if you're sharing it multiple times on social media, because I have to share things manually online. Line is a very cool tool. Everybody in Thailand uses Line. It's like the Facebook of Thailand, if you will. But there is no easy way uh, to, to automate sharing from, from Libsyn. I'd love to do that. I'd love to have it as soon as the show goes live, you know, schedule a, a post via Libsyn onto Line, but there's not an integration. So I have to do it manually. And so rather than going to the blog post and copying the uh, title and pasting it in a line and then copying, yeah, yeah, I could do all of that. But in my descriptors tab, 
everything I need is right there. I'm not having to fight through finding content, finding information. It makes my life easier. And it's a way that my partner can chime in because we do it ahead of time. We record on Thursdays. We don't release until the next Wednesday. We've got a full week. If there's any tweaking that needs to be done, it's all right there. The scriptures tab is really, really key and critical. I also showed you a script. And the script that I utilized was just a linear process, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's how the show was built. Uh, my, my other clients use a slightly different modified format, but I think it's important when you're writing a script is to present it to yourself in the way that your show naturally flows so that you don't forget what your segments are. Even if you record those segments individually, I think it's important to have it in a flow. Now, we don't. We start from the top and go to the bottom, well, then we actually record something else that we drop on the top. But we recorded the whole thing through. There's a, it's rare that we stop in the middle and say, oh, uh, wait, we were going to talk about that. No, because it was all in the script. Some people write their entire script out word for word. And if that's what your show format is, awesome. I sound like I'm reading from a script when I write too much from a script. I don't want to do that. We want to have some natural flow. But that's entirely up to you. So this is a way to have the natural flow in the conversation, even if you just put bullet points in of what you want to talk about. I think it'll really help you out. Uh, and the third thing I showed you was the actual way that I write show notes, what my process is, where I listen to the full episode. Yes, the entire episode, all the way through. Yes, I've heard it before if I edited, it, if I edited the show. Uh, and yes, I'll probably listen to it again when it goes live. Listen to your show. It's kind of an important piece. And then write some show notes inside of Google Docs so that your partner or someone else can proof. I'm, you probably found a typo in that one because it hasn't yet, you know, who knows what, what I did right or did, did wrong on that one. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's it. That is my process. It's a process I use for the, uh, the Bangkok podcast, which we record each and every week. It's the process I use similar to that for this one time show that my lovely wife Sheila and I do uh, mostly on a weekly basis, although that's just more for fun. It's the same process and the same playbook or the same styles that I'm using for the clients uh, that I produce a show for. Uh, one is called a Lush Life, or I'm sorry, Lush Life Podcast, which is a drinking travel show, which is kind of fun. We want to travel the world and drink heavily. Uh, and it's a process that uh, I and my other client, uh, Rick, follow for counting countries. It's a podcast where Rick is interviewing people who have either traveled to all 193 UN recognized countries or people who have the stated goal of traveling to all 193 United Nations sanctioned countries. That's a long, long process show. So sometimes I'm just part of the, you know, I, I just have certain aspects. Sometimes it's what I do every single day. And uh, that's it. That's what I use. And hopefully it was helpful. Dave, did you get any value out of that? We got so much value from that, Evo. We appreciate it. I'm just looking at the chat now and everybody's saying, you know, such great information. They've they've heard about you for a while, but they have, have never heard you speak or present. So thank you so much for all those. People are saying there's scalable tips. There's there's actionable items they can take back for the podcast to to improve their flow. So before we end this broadcast, where can people go to find more about you and your podcast? Well, you can find out all about me by simply going to me, uh, evoterra.com probably has a link to the, the things I'm doing, including the podcasts. Uh, and if you, you need do this process and you want uh, a professional device and maybe a strategist to come help you, uh, here's a good spot, podcastlaunch.pro, if that's showing up on the, on the process. Yeah, all those that's places awesome. will reach me. Yeah, and everybody uh, in the chat room, and this will be on YouTube as a as a video here very shortly. So, Evo, we appreciate you taking part in International Podcast Day 2017. Thank you so much, and don't forget, everybody, use hashtag International Podcast Day. Choke the crap. That means good luck in Thai. <laughs>